So when we uh, uh, want to develop the uh, um, equation for a LNA voltage gain, uh, we can take a simplified uh, schematic uh, where we can see a very simplified uh, transistor equivalent circuit. Uh, uh, the generation inductor that was uh, uh, introduced when we um, needed to have simultaneous uh, input and uh, uh, noise and uh, impedance match. And we have um, uh, L gate, which is uh, part of the input um, match. And uh, let's assume uh, that we have an inductor for a, um, for output load. Um, we usually use inductors as output load because they don't have voltage drop on them at DC and uh, they can uh, usually also resonate capacitance that it's there but we will just neglect it for the treatment that uh, we do now. So if we look at the Laplace um, plane and we will just uh, look at the Kirchhoff equations of uh, V out over V in V in will be here. Uh, we can show uh, quite easily that this will be the term for a um, uh, voltage gain. And uh, this is the transfer function from input to output. And uh, if we look here, we can find that this uh, um, a second order uh, polynome has only a left half plane uh, poles. And so such a circuit and this LNA, uh, simplified LNA, will always be uh, stable. So after uh, developing the, uh, um, the equation for a voltage gain of this simplified uh, LNA in the Laplace plane, uh, we just uh, want to take the uh, absolute value of the gain. Uh, over frequency or in, uh, uh, over uh, omega. And basically when we take the uh, absolute value, we need to take the absolute value of the uh, uh, of this part over the absolute value of the denominator. Here it's very easy. We just uh, ignore the phase. Here we need to uh, take a square root of the um, um, imaginary part squared plus the real part squared and this will be the absolute value of the gain so now we have uh, um, we have uh, an equation that is uh, uh, is describing the gain over uh, frequency or over over omega let's uh, take some uh, very simple cases of this equation when omega uh, goes to zero we are left with uh, uh, this term here, which is dmll uh, omega. And that means that we have um, a linear, uh, linear relationship between frequency and gain. And uh, this is what we see in this uh, regime, when omega is very, very close to zero. Then uh, we can take the other extreme, when uh, omega goes to infinity, and we put omega uh, goes to infinity in this term and what we find that we are left with this um, equation and here we have um, we have the uh, uh, the relationship with omega but it, it it is a reverse relationship so this is this area here and when omega goes uh, it grows we have uh, the gain goes uh, uh, down and then we can uh, find another interesting uh, point, is, and this is the point where this part goes to zero. So this is actually the resonance frequency. This is exactly the frequency where this C gate uh, is resonated with the LG and LS, the two uh, inductors. And at this uh, uh, frequency, uh, we find a very, very simple um, uh, um, result which is ll over ls so and and it is very easy to show that this is actually uh, the point for maximum gain so if we look at this uh, if we look at this uh, voltage gain and we just uh, uh, look at the maximum 
exploring the function, we will find that this point is actually the maximum. So now we have a simple function where we know the maximum is uh, the ratio between the uh, um, output inductor over the, the generation inductor and we have a, a linear relationship with omega here and a reverse relationship with omega here and uh, it's very nice because with very very simple um, analytic expressions we have explained what we usually uh, see in uh, simulators we see this shape and we don't know where it's coming from so it's it's always nice to know uh, the root of uh, these shapes. So now uh, uh, we can take a similar circuit and uh, just go to a simulator uh, because it's always easier to, uh, to simulate and we just want to make sure that uh, we get the same results before we continue uh, and we just uh, uh, take an example uh, we just put these parameters we give them, uh, we give them very reasonable values for GM, for CGS, for uh, L gate and LS and uh, the load LL, uh, all these numbers are very reasonable numbers that uh, are reasonable for, for real circuit design. And uh, by calculating, we know that uh, this is the resonance, the input resonance frequency we mentioned before, and should be 7.5 gigahertz. And this is the frequency where the gain should be maximized. And if we just look at the simulator, we find that this is exactly where we get the maximum gain. And uh, this example was designed such that LL over LS ex uh, equals 10 exactly. And this is what we find here. So the maximum is 10. So our simulator is really very fine what we showed in the previous page. And uh, of course, we chose the GMLS and CGS to equals 50 ohm um, as needed for uh, input impedance matching. And if we look, we can find that really the real part of uh, Z in is 50 ohm, and the imaginary part in this example really cross uh, uh, an equals zero at 7.5 gigahertz. So it's the same frequency where the gain is maximized. So we will use this example uh, soon to show uh, what happens in real uh, world situation. So far we have uh, neglected CGD uh, from uh, our treatment to really simplify uh, the analysis and, uh, and learn some basic um, facts about our circuits. Uh, but of course our analysis is not uh, complete uh, without uh, including CGD. Uh, so now we will just introduce CGD uh, which is the gate draw drain uh, capacitance, it's actually parasitic capacitance that is always there uh, into the circuit and examine the effects that uh, this CGD uh, has. And uh, here again we will use the same parameters we used before However, CGD that we will introduce will be uh, about 30% of uh, CGS, which is also a very practical number uh, uh, in, in uh, technologies that we talk about. So we just add CGD uh, to the previous circuit and we look both at the gain and the uh, input match results. And what we find when we look at the gain, we see that the maximum gain has dropped a little bit it's not 10 anymore it's closer to uh, to 8 and it's also shifted down in frequency okay this is uh, something that uh, um, we can later on uh, see why it happened but uh, for now it's not really scary but if we look at the impedance we find that uh, in yellow here uh, the yellow curve starts at minus uh, almost 60 ohms which is a very very confusing result and uh, uh, this is a, a, a basis to understand that this circuit will have stability issues later on uh, just uh, to remind you we are trying to get 50 ohm plus 50 ohm impedance a real part and now we're getting a, a negative part so we must look into this so CGD really uh, introduces problems that we cannot uh, uh, understand without uh, accounting for CGD.
Okay, so far uh, we have uh, introduced uh, a voltage gain of a very, very simplified LNA and we got some uh, interesting results. Then we, have then we have introduced CGD and we saw that CGD is causing some issues but this, these were both very uh, simplified uh, schematics and uh, you know there's no uh, motivation to use uh, such schematics when uh, we have a much more uh, complete model of transistors and uh, uh, good simulators and why should we care about very very simplified uh, uh, schematics so uh, let's look what happens with the real transistor model with much more parameters but uh, this example will bias the transistor and the transistor size was chosen such that the parameters we have chosen before uh, would be very identical in the um, um, actual transistor that is simulated here. However, this is a much more complete. Uh, this is a BSIM3 version 3 model uh, with uh, more than 200 parameters and this is what people really use in simulators. But let's look at the results of this circuit and try to compare them to the previous slide. So when we do that, just because we made sure that the major parameters are similar between this circuit and the circuit with CGD, we find that the gain is uh, quite close to 8 and also the frequency is a little bit lower than the frequency we saw in the previous slide because this is a more complete uh, uh, simulation and we find that the, the the yellow curve here okay is still negative uh, at similar frequencies even though it it goes back to to be uh, positive here we will explain this this is a part of uh, the circuit but it's not really a difference so we find that here at, at least at this uh, minimum we, we got minus 75 ohm so we get the same phenomena that we saw before and just to explain why we didn't see this part in the previous slide when we introduced CGD is that this part is a result of the uh, biasing resistor the 10k biasing resistor that I had to to add here um, to uh, um, bias the gate such that I will get uh, um, the right operating point. So this 10k resistor is also part of the uh, input impedance and at very low frequencies where uh, the input capacitance uh, and the, uh, the, the omega are such that the impedance to, um, to the transistor is high what determines the impedance will be this 10k uh, resistor and that's why we see this uh, part that will approach 10k at, uh, at DC. So this is really coming from the resistor that I added to, to the circuit and this example is actually very very similar to what we saw in the previous slide with the very simplified model and so we have the same problems uh, even same order of magnitude that we saw when we just added a simple CGD to the problem. So now we have a motivation to continue and investigate a simple circuit with a CGD because it actually gives us a very good idea of what happens with real transistors. And uh, it's very difficult to draw analytical uh, uh, results for such uh, uh, transistors, but it's much easier to do it with uh, uh, simplified the circuit that we saw in the previous slide. So we will continue doing it in the next slide. Okay, now we can revise uh, both the circuit and the expression for a voltage gain. The circuit is revised such that we have CGD uh, in the schematic that was neglected before and uh, now we will find that uh, uh, the expression for voltage gain is uh, much more complicated but this is the full expression that we get uh, by using the Laplace uh, form of the impedances. Um, the order of the denominator here is uh, 
now uh, fourth order. And if we will investigate this um, denominator, uh, we will find out that uh, um, this transfer function has uh, also poles uh, in the right-hand side. So this is the RHP that we see here, right HP uh, uh, roots for this uh, polynome. That means that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, right-hand side uh, poles in the S-plane. And uh, this is always uh, an issue with uh, potential instability that we will uh, investigate uh, further on. Uh, as we saw, uh, we also saw negative resistance for the input, so we get another indication that this uh, circuit may be uh, unstable. Just to complete the picture and try to give a very rough explanation to why the gain has shifted and dropped in the same way we, we saw in the simulations, it's much easier to do it in the simulation, uh, we can uh, take the expression we got in the S plane and uh, uh, put the J omega to replace S uh, in the expression. And we get an uh, expression from the fourth order and uh, it's too complicated to, to analyze this function. Uh, but uh, we can do some uh, approximations, at least in, uh, in uh, low frequencies, we can uh, neglect all the terms with the omega to the, four, uh, to the fourth uh, power. Uh, which is a reasonable um, neglection. And then we are left with the third order um, and, and then we, uh, we can get to a simple, uh, simpler expression uh, for the gain. And by now uh, taking some approximations as uh, we can see here, which are reasonable approximations, uh, we can find the absolute value and now we find that there are two resonances, first resonance, second resonance. And uh, this expression can explain why the gain uh, drops a little bit and also why the uh, resonance frequency shifted down. Because with the values of inductors that were used in the example that we can see here, LG, LL and LS, uh, this first resonance is lower than the first resonance we had uh, when we neglected CGD. So uh, now we have a better understanding why uh, maximum gain dropped in frequency and the value um, also was reduced. But it is really depending uh, on, on the values that we choose. If we will choose uh, different values, it may be that the gain will be even higher than it was before. However, uh, this circuit is interesting to understand, but we first need to stabilize it. So um, we will uh, go into understanding the potential instability of uh, such circuits before we continue uh, developing a further understanding uh, for the gain. So in this uh, tutorial, uh, we have looked at uh, voltage gain uh, properties of a uh, common source LNA. Uh, we have found that uh, LS, the degeneration inductor that was introduced to support uh, uh, noise and input matching, um, is also part of the, uh, the gain equation. But uh, LL over LS, which was the uh, simplified gain, uh, means that uh, we cannot increase LS too much because it will reduce the gain. Uh, then we have introduced CGD and we found that CGD, um, which is very uh, similar to what happens in a real transistor, uh, make the circuit potentially unstable. And we will have to treat this uh, instability in um, the next tutorials.